It's not a matter for debate. There will be abominations among the mages, and we must be prepared. If we rescind the offer of an alliance, it makes the Inquisition appear incompetent at best, tyrannical at worst. What were you thinking, turning mages loose with no oversight? The veil is torn open. They're not monsters. They're people, and they deserve the same respect as anyone else. This is not about respect. Even the strongest mages can be overcome by demons in conditions like these. Enough arguing. None of us were there. We cannot afford to second-guess our people. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the mages' aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. And here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. Closing the breach will require a lot of magic, and that means Lyrium. I have contacts who can help. Contacts meaning smugglers? Send them word. We need every advantage. We have legitimate Lyrium supply lines already. And they don't need to hear of this. Keep it under the table, and I'll do what I can to quiet rumors. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinter cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. And I'd hope to sit out the assault on the breach. Take a nap, maybe go for a walk. What is it they say? No rest for the wicked. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're staying? Oh, didn't I mention? The south is so charming and rustic. I adore it to little pieces. I must admit I'm surprised. We both saw what could happen. What this Elder One and his cult are trying to do. Not everything from Tevinter is terrible. Some of us have fought for eons against this sort of madness. It's my duty to stand with you. That future will not come to pass. There's no one I'd rather be stranded in time with, future or present. Excellent choice. But let's not get stranded again anytime soon, yes? I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory. Um, the Inquisition appreciates your assistance in this matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. You'll have your Illyrium by the end of the week. I should tell you, Ambassador, the Chantry raised some fuss when they learned about our arrangement. The Inquisition must certainly seem an audacious idea to the Grand Clerics. We hope to convince them it is a necessary one as well. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who is she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the dwarves to secure Lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. How? Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We're becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power, instead of comforting the masses. The Chantry should be a place of hope, not another group scrambling for answers. That must be its strength again. The Chant did much to bridge nations. Little but the Chantry ties Orle, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? And Rassi's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. So if everyone listens to the chant, things will be smooth as silk. I did say commonality is merely a beginning, but it's an important one. 
We must learn to think beyond our own wants, to secure peace in Thedas. The Inquisition will have plenty of time for that, between finding the Divine's murderer and sealing the breach. Busy as we are, I do have a question for you, if you've a moment. The remaining Grand Cleric sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of you. I'd tell the Chantry I was saved by circumstance, not divine intervention. Yet as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. All demon claw wounds, as you suggest, to deal with Come the Come to me, child, and I, I shall... I understand you were instrumental you. in garnering in the assistance of the rebel mages. Eternity. It is well done. And I pray this Inquisition fares better than the Chantry in its handling of magic. You disapprove of something the Chantry did. Are you allowed to do that? That largely depends upon one's company. While surrounded by those declared heretics already, I am safe enough. In some ways, Andraste had the simpler task. Magic should serve man and not rule over him. That tells us what should be, but it does not tell us how to get there. So many times the methods of men have undone the spirit of their goals. Once you have sealed the breach, we shall see whether this Inquisition is truer to the Chantry or its own namesake. Can you tell me how our people are doing? What would you like to know? How are the villagers in Haven doing? You did well to gain the mages to your cause. The people have hope that the breach may be sealed. Some of them are returning to the lives they fled. Others are starting fresh. In either case, they no longer believe the world as they know it is ending. Do you have information on people elsewhere? The refugees in the hinterlands are desperate. Without help, starvation or war will claim many lives. Villagers in Crestwood are besieged by their own dead. They have sent word begging for assistance. People are vanishing in the hills of Empress du Lyon. It may be demons or something worse, but they are terrified. More than that I cannot say. It is a chaotic time for all in Olay and Ferelden. Farewell, revered mother. Farewell. Magic exists to serve man and never to... If Fiona and her malcontents are joining us as allies, we need to be prepared. Abominations are inevitable. Cullen doesn't have enough Templars to handle incidents. Some of the rank and file need to be trained. These mages joined us freely. We don't need Templars to contain them. My dear, I don't think you've grasped the magnitude of the situation. The veil is broken, and the raw power of the Fade rushes out like floodwaters through a shattered levee. In ordinary places where the veil is weak, magic is much more likely to attract demons. And if demons can walk our world with no blood magic to summon them, how safe do you think our allies are? There has never been a greater threat to mages than the Breach. Until it is closed, no one is safe. You have a low opinion of your fellow mages. It's not so much an opinion as grasping the obvious. Magic is dangerous, just as fire is dangerous. Anyone who forgets this truth gets burned. You're right, but Templars are a poor solution. They are men, and all men are flawed. That some fail does not mean that none should try. The fact remains that there is no cure for an abomination except death. 
Someone must strike the killing blow. Who shall lower the blade if not a Templar? Tell me something. As you will no doubt have a hand in shaping it, what future do you see for mages? Mages shouldn't be kept out of the Chantry. Who knows the dangers of magic better than a mage? A curious idea. Such twists and turns your mind takes. It's something to consider, my dear. Mages. Lovely. They should have this breach sealed soon enough. I suppose their gold spends as well as anyone else's. Your open support for the mages likely earned you enemies. Our agents will monitor the situation. If the most opposed can be identified, we may still turn this to our advantage. You're not planning assassinations, are you? I was planning to unleash Josephine on them. She kills with kindness. Regardless, I applaud you for the courage to stand up for the mages. In Redcliffe, you sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. One small life in exchange for a second chance at history. I always loved a bargain. You were condemned to a lightless dungeon. Not much of a life to sacrifice. And I would do it again. Anything I should know? Altegan has returned to Redcliffe Castle and resumed his duties as Lord. The people are returning, slowly but surely. Unfortunately, our show of support for the mages has angered many. I'll leave you to your work. So we have gained the mages. Excellent. They should be able to seal the breach. You are certain you experienced time travel. Could it have been an illusion? A trick of the Fade? You think Alexius made an illusion of his own life going down in flames? Point taken. What an amazing gift. It is vital the Inquisition succeed to avoid the future you witness. I'm surprised you're not more interested in your own future. I know enough. If that future happened, then I and Cassandra, Cullen and the rest, failed to stop this Elder One. Speaking of which, you should ready yourself. For? This Elder One. You have now interfered with his plans twice. Once at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, and now again at Redcliffe. A being who aspires to godhood is unlikely to ignore such an affront. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Hallamshiral? Cows milking farmers? Give me time. I'm sure I'll surprise you. I suspect that's untrue. Unless you strip yourself naked and allow the Chantry to flog you into repentance. Now that would surprise me. I do wonder if you've considered what this support of yours will do. For majors in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern majors license to, well, be like majors back home. What would be wrong with that, exactly? Nothing, at first. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the South. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed, by inches. Not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? Just how often is blood magic used there? Oh, not at all. Not at all? That's what any Magister would tell you. 
they'd be convincingly offended by the notion too. Of course, what people call blood magic here and what we consider blood magic are two different things. What's considered actual blood magic in Tevinter? Blood magic isn't inherently dangerous. Using your own blood or that of a willing participant, what's the harm? The problem is that what's permitted only gets you so much power. And what if you need more? You always need more. That's where we get into sacrifices and demon summoning. None of that is done. Not officially. Behind closed doors, it's a different story. Real blood magic can give you an edge, a leg up against your opponents. It's safe to assume that any mage of rank does it. The rest are quietly shut out of power, to put it bluntly. You'd think the Templars would object. I imagine they did, long ago. Once, their investigations might have been sincere. Then their balls were cut off, too inconvenient. Nowadays, only the friendless are accused. Most of them probably innocent. There must be some mages who oppose this. Of course. I do. And I'm not entirely alone. Occasionally, there'll be a magister who makes noise. And then the reform talk begins. All very patriotic. Meanwhile, that magister will be quietly shunned. Chances are, surprise, it's learned he was a Maleficar all along. Most learn to keep quiet. Me? <laughs> I enjoy the allure of pariahood. Anyone who talks about the Imperium mentions slavery. It's the center of the slave trade. Ah, that is true. And did you have slaves? Not personally, but my family does and treats them well. Honestly, I never thought much about it until I came south. Back home, it's how it is. Slaves are everywhere. You don't question it. I'm not even certain many slaves do. Well, we don't have slaves in the south. In the south, you have alienages, slums, both human and elven. The desperate have no way out. Back home, a poor man can sell himself. As a slave, he could have a position of respect, comfort, and could even support a family. Some slaves are treated poorly, it's true. But do you honestly think inescapable poverty is better? Is that what you call it? Treated poorly? Abuse heaped upon those without power isn't limited to Tevinter, my friend. I don't know what it's like to be a slave, true. I never thought about it until I saw how different it was here. But I suspect you don't know either. Nor should you believe that every tale of Tevinter excess is the norm. There's an Imperial Chantry, isn't there? With its own Divine. You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face. Like you're urinating in public. But yes, we do have the Chantry, or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvelous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, but the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman. A mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah, blah, blah. We feel better believing Andreste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the south declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. So, the imperial divine is always a man? All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? 
Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them for the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The circles are in command. There are circles of magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce their Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the south. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. I'm not surprised. It's not an opinion you should share. You did ask, if you'll recall. I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me? That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. I'm not sure about that myself. Doubt is good. I like doubt. It will keep you sane. Me? I've seen too much to believe I know everything. The world is bigger than I. Even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe. But I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. I'm wondering if the Imperium would be a useful ally. I'd think you'd be more concerned whether or not they'd support the Venatori. They won't. At least, not officially. They'll disavow all knowledge of dangerous cultists. Secretly, many Magisters will rejoice at the idea. And if the South falls to chaos in the meantime, all the better. It would be in the Imperium's best interest to help. Surely it could use allies. I think the Imperium gave up on the idea of allies a long time ago. We've been fighting the Canari for what? 200 years off and on? It's a point of pride that we go it alone. They'll sneer at the South behind their silk handkerchiefs and say, you've had it easy for far too long. Let's not forget that the Inquisition seems to be an arm of the Orlesian Chantry. Anathema so far as they're concerned. We're not part of the Chantry. The Chantry opposed the Inquisition's formation. You think that matters? Don't be silly. The Herald of Andraste. Your very title smacks of the Southern Chantry. You may as well be a heathen. I think they're far more frightened what you'll do if you succeed. It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. I find it strange that your mages don't rule anything at all. <laughs> Actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. The Magisterium rules. That magisters are all mages is considered a convenient technicality. What is the Magisterium, exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All mages now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter Mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. 
Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later, lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soperati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new Magisters, which means all the families vie madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinta influence, let me tell you. If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule, then. Yes and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Divinda legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Poor sods don't realize that means he'll be a quaestor at the arse end of the Hundred Pillars, at best. Being a quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Let me ask you something else. Of course. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinta, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. Some more than others. Some people have superior taste. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinta in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. What did you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Tevinta don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, with a minority. It just seems... So much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. 
You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Tevinter? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters, I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Tevinter here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree. But that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked... despondent. Broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I suppose the Inquisition will judge him eventually. I wonder if there's any chance they'll show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew. Did you know we're actually related, Inquisitor? Related? Oh, not first cousins or anything like that. Can you imagine? You're a Trevelyan, however, and somewhere in the dank nethers of my family tree, there was also a Trevelyan. Perhaps he was even the one who ventured to Ostwick to establish the branch. We are talking long ago, of course. You know that off the top of your head? Not the top. Maybe the lower middle or thereabouts. Bloodlines are serious business in Tevinta. You're taught lessons and tested by strict nannies. I heard your family mentioned, and I had to go through all the old mnemonics, but yes, there it is. I knew there was a reason we looked so much alike. Uh, yay? Indeed, yay! I just... Oh, pish. You go back far enough. 90% of Thedas has to vinter blood. No need to panic, Inquisitor. I should go. Naturally. So far in the rain. Well, that's mages all over. So many robes. I bet all of Ferelden lost their curtains. I'll just be the other side of Haven, just in case. Do you have a problem with our new allies? With mages? No problem with mages. I mean, you know some that are all right. My problem is magic. If mages sat on their hands, everything would be fine. I mean, yay, freedom. Great for them. Over there, away from me. I'll be back if I need you. Go on. Just returning the cuts, Frissa. Save us, everyone. The nation reviles. The course is but run. An end has begun. Empress so far, believe in our soul. Embrace us with arms and dress us with swords. So far, what season may come? We fight for the day, or restore our heart and bring us to glory.
The Mage Rebellion joins the Inquisition. I've got to admit, that's a twist I didn't see coming. One thing you saw in the future worries me. I mean, it was all bad. But Red Lyrium and Ferelden infecting people and growing out of them, that's bad. Finding more of it really punches a hole in my Red Lyrium at the temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. I'd like to keep hoping it's a coincidence, if you don't mind. I need to be able to sleep at night. Honestly, I, I think I'll give up sleeping for the foreseeable future. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? I was planning to put my feet up. Maybe grab a nap. You? Whatever I do, it'll be as far from Cassandra as I can get. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know. And what are we supposed to do, exactly? What you always do, complain. We've already spoken with Commander Cullen. No one listens. We want better quarters. We want the Templars kept at a distance. And some respect for... This is not the Circle. You mages are our allies, not our wards. Act like it. How are we supposed to... Deal with it. It never ends, evidently. You don't need to tell me that. I just don't know who told them I'm the one to yell at. Is it that bad? The mages are here as equals. They need to get used to what that means. It is your doing, after all. You created this alliance. I had to think on my feet, and I did what I could. Oh. I do sound like I'm blaming you, don't I? I don't disapprove. In fact, you did well. You made a decision when it needed to be made. And here we are. I wish I could say this was my doing. You're flattering me. I'm not. This always happens. Nobody ever takes my meaning. <laughs> you should see your face. I'm thinking less flattering things now. <laughs> Let's hope the Breach has your sense of humor. The mages are ready to approach the Breach. I pray this will be enough to close it. I know you're worried about having the mages here. Give them a chance to prove themselves. I'm not questioning their ability or their intentions, but... We cannot ignore the risks. I will not endanger the alliance you've created. We need their help. Any precautions taken will be to ensure the safety of our people and the mages themselves. Nothing more. Is there anything I should know? I'm glad to have the charges on our side. Bull's men are professionals, despite evidence to the contrary. That's all for now. Another time, then. So, that Tevinter guy sent you into the future? Ugh. Every time I think I understand magic, the rules change. <laughs> I know, right? If I were a mage, I'd just throw fire at people. That's honest. Anyway, I hope our new friends have what it takes to close the breach. Damn thing gives me a headache just looking at it. Nice work at Redcliffe. I could help the mages learn to work with Inquisition soldiers if you like. <clears throat> Not that the chief has any apostates in the group. K 
Can you think of any other tasks suitable for the Chargers? The Templars have holed up in Thoranfall Redoubt. No idea what's happening inside. I could have some of the boys poke around. If nothing else, we'd get a better look at the land. Can we talk about the Bull's Chargers? Certainly. What can I tell you? Have you had any other interesting jobs? This old Asian guy paid us to clear out some bandits who'd taken over his mine. We got in, took down most of them, and had just reached their leader when the mine collapsed around us. Turns out the bandits were working for the Elysian guy, and he wanted to cover up their agreement. The bandits passed around shovels. We all got to digging. Tracked a lot of dirt into that Elysian's bedroom. We'll talk later.